Hello and welcome again to another morning or evening, whatever time you're joining us, of a Heart to Home devotional. Today we're going to be talking about self-sacrifice and the, not only the model that Jesus portrayed, but um, the challenge that he gave to his disciples and those who uh, questioned him on what it means to be great in the kingdom of God. And so today we're going to be kind of overviewing the first uh, two chapters, which are uh, Mark 8 and 9, kind of just an ex explanation of what uh, Jesus shows us there. Um, and then we're going to be focusing mainly on Mark chapter 10, uh, verse 23, beginning of verse 23. But before we get started, let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this morning. We pray that you would be in this time that we spend in your word, Lord. We pray that you would bless it, Lord, that you would give us the strength to do these things you've charged us to do, Lord, that we do it in your strength and not of our own. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so the first thing I would like to note is in Mark chapter 8 and 9, we see uh, Jesus repeatedly, and he does it again in chapter 10, but we'll get there. Uh, he talks about his death, burial, and resurrection. He explains to them, to his disciples, that he has to suffer. Not that he's, he's going to suffer, but that he must suffer. And in, in, in this is the sense that sin, the, the things that we do, we go against an eternal God. God's eternal. He created us, and he's outside of time, space, and matter. And so he... If we sin against an eternal God, there must be eternal consequences. And so, just as if you had done something to wrong a uh, brother, maybe you, your friend just got a new phone, a tablet, new wh whatever you call it, and uh, they, you, you say, oh, that's so cool, can I look at it? And when in your process of inspecting their new gadget, you, they, you drop it and it breaks. Well, now that has to be paid for in order for them to have a new phone, tablet, whatever it is, or in order for you to make recompense, but someone's got to pay a price because the item is no longer usable. They could forgive you, but that still, the consequence goes on them. Now they don't have an item uh, that they once previously had. So there's, there's always a payment that must be made. And so Jesus takes this approach to his life, that he must make atonement for the sins of those who he loves, which is the world. And um, those who believe in him uh, shall not perish but have eternal life. But the disciples don't get this, and so he has to repeat it a few times. And so uh, in chapter 10, we see Jesus talk to uh, the rich young ruler, and through that he talks about um, that this rich young ruler who's requesting, what must I do to enter the kingdom of God? And he tells the rich young ruler to sell, get rid of all that he owns and follow him. And we find that the rich young ruler actually walks away sad because he knew he had many riches. And so now, starting in verse 23, we see uh, the what Jesus he just has this time with the rich young ruler, and so now he's going to talk to the disciples. And he's going to question them, like, okay, uh, how is it, uh, can someone who's rich enter the kingdom of God? And so we pick up in verse 23. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard is it for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God? And the disciples were astonished at his word. But Jesus answered again and said to them, children, how hard is it for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And so the first thing we should note is that the disciples were astonished at these words, indicating that there were many in that time who had a good amount of riches or possessions, what earthly possessions. In fact, that if you had a place to live that was considered a decent uh, dwelling place, you had maybe not many riches, but you did have something. And his command was to, to get rid of all of that. And, and how hard is it for someone who has those things to enter the kingdom of, of God? And so he says that it's easier for, uh, it is harder for, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle 
than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And this eye of a needle, it can be one of two interpretations, each of which both in, fall, go close right into the same thing. Uh, the, the eye of a needle could be referring to a literal eye of a needle. And, and of course, it's, that's insane to have a camel try to fit through an eye of a, a needle. That's, that's insane. It's easier for a camel to fit through there than for a rich man. And the, the other interpretation is, which is in that time in a gate, in a city of a gate, a kingdom, there would be a big door and a smaller door in that big door. And this smaller door was for uh, like passage of goods and stuff. And so camels weren't really supposed to go through that. They were supposed to go through the bigger door. And so what he, what he would have been saying is that the camel, which had all these goods on it, would have to strip off all of these possessions, would have to get rid of all the equipment that it was holding and squeeze through that narrow passageway. And, and it would be easier for a camel to do that than for a rich person to enter in. And so I'm not saying that it's impossible, but that it's very hard. And it requires the sacrifice of the one who is willing. They must be willing to make that sacrifice. And so the key point that Jesus is trying to make is that those who desire, and he's, he's going to actually get to that later. We won't be able to get to it today. But Jesus tells his disciples that those who desire to follow him, to enter into his kingdom, must pick up their cross and follow him, take up their cross and follow him daily. It was a self-sacrifice thing. Just as Jesus must suffer, we must suffer for his sake. We must suffer alongside him. He calls us to walk the life that he's shown, uh, he, he's shown us through his walk here on earth. And it was not that of riches, glory, fame, and power. It was of suffering like a servant, serving others as to the capacity as he should have been served. He's the almighty God. He was God himself in the flesh, yet he served others to his utmost capacity, even to sacrifice himself for our sins. And so that's the model, the example that we've been shown, that we should portray through our lives. It's, we shouldn't think of anything as beneficial to ourselves, but in everything we must uh, desire to be pleasing the Lord with what we're doing as unto others. Serve others as you ought to to be served by others. And so uh, this is my word of encouragement for you guys this week, and uh, God bless.